knew and loved Skull. Skull was just such a personality. I mean, he was just uh, a character. Oh, everyone loves Skull. And Skull and I have been friends a long time. Now you can stand side by side with country music's biggest stars as they hunt for his killer. Go inside a stranger's house. Willie Nelson, Tanya Tucker, and some other greats of country music are asking for your help. One of their most beloved friends was murdered right inside this club, and there are very few clues to go on. So let's let these country legends tell the story themselves, as only they can. To all the girls I've loved before, who traveled in and out my door. Somebody somewhere, don't know what he's missing. In our business, uh, Nashville is, is home. We're just happy to be a small part of country music. We've had some great times down there, I tell you. But Printer's Alley is just a bunch of little clubs right in a row. It was just a place to hang out in Printer's Alley. And that's what a lot of artists did before they had that chance to really make it big, before they became stars. Printer's Alley there in Nashville had a lot of colorful places and a lot of uh, good spots to go. And uh, Skull's Place, uh, the Rainbow Room, was one of them. And it was, uh, uh, everybody, uh, you know, checked it out every time they'd go to Nashville. You knew him just as Skull. I don't, you know, it took me a while before I knew his real name was David Skull Schumann. But I, but I always just knew him as Skull, and everybody did. So Skull and I have been friends a long time, and he was a fan and, and friend. And ever since I first went to Nashville back in 1961. He was the mayor of Printer's Alley. Uh, Even a, if he was self-elected, he, he was the mayor. We met Skull when we first came into town to do Hee Haw in 1968, and he loved Hee Haw. He loved country music. He told me, he said, I breathe and eat. I love country music. We had made a decision to adopt him as a Hee Haw cast member. But before you leave the city, you want just one more thrill. Go hear the tuba player at Skull's Rainbow Bar and Grill. We got him a pair of Hee Haw overhauls. A hee haw cap and a hee haw t shirt. He wore them everywhere. You'd see him walking up and down the street with his poodles. Skull was just such a personality. I mean, he was just uh, a caricature. Oh, everyone loved Skully, and uh, he was always walk his dogs. You know, every afternoon you would see him, he was always had his pups walking him. So, uh, you know, a guy that likes dogs, he must be okay, I guess. <laughs> He was an original Nashville character. He was uh, he sort of showed up at the oddest places at the oddest times and did the oddest things. If you just left the stage or was going on the stage and you know, knew you had a little time, he'd say, could they snap a picture of me and you? This is Skull's trademark. It's his uh, belt buckle that he used to wear to scare the evil and the bad people away. I'd say it was about 2.30 when he came in. Of course, it, he always gets a shave and haircut, shampoo. I called him a cab, and he left the shop at 4.30. It was about 4.30 when I went over to Skulls Club, and uh, I chatted with him for a spell. He wanted me to put some photos up for him, but I was very tired from working somewhere else. And I told him I'd do it tomorrow, and I left about 15 minutes right after I entered there, and that was the last time I saw Skull. here at about 6.20 that afternoon that uh, Skull was found laying here uh, looking as if he'd been assaulted by a knife wound. The evidence suggests that Skull was cut six times here and during the struggle he fell and hit the bar stool and fell over onto the floor. Uh, paramedics and ourselves uh, found Skull and took him to the hospital. And so I went to the hospital, and that, that was a, yeah, it was a, it was a tough experience. I, I sang him a little song, and I, I believe that I believe he heard, he heard me. I hope he did. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. Farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther along, we'll 
understand why. So cheer up, my brothers, live in the sunshine. Cause we'll understand it all by and by. And I think that what that song says is, um, we don't really know why these things happen to such really wonderful people. And others that are around us are so evil and are, they prosper. He died an hour later, uh, but we'll all miss Skull. We think after the killer, after he attacked Skull, he rushed into the ladies' restroom here, briefly washed up and rushed out, leaving out the rear of the bar. We think it was a botch robbery. Our profile on the uh, person that we think is responsible is a young white male, uh, considerably tall since Skull was six feet itself. Uh, we think that uh, he used a weapon that was very dull and the attack on Skull itself was amateur. This is the first murder that ever happened in Prentice Island. This is uh, a very safe area because you have so many uh, professional people that have businesses in this alley here. It's just a shame that someone that wouldn't hurt nobody, wouldn't hurt anyone, has to die so just maliciously. And I do pray that uh, as a result of you folks taking a segment like this and doing it, that we can find who murdered David Skull Shulman. If you know anything about this crime, call 1-800-CRIME-TV. Now, one thing we've learned over the years is that punks usually talk. Now, someone out there must have heard something. If you know anything, anything at all about the murder of Skull Showman, please make that call. Now, if you want to learn more about this case, you can read about it in this month's issue of America's Most Wanted magazine. And when we come back, you'll meet a cop whose quick thinking saved 200 lives. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Up next, the heroic deeds of America's best cops.